This is Talk About Topeka on GAB Local TV. This episode is sponsored by Field of Greens and The Break Room. Here's your host, Chris Schultz. We have a really extra special guest here in the studio with me, and I know he's a pretty humble guy, so he won't like me to say that, but his name is Doug Wallace, and he's probably one of the most knowledgeable historians in Topeka. I'll say one of the most, because we have some really great historians yes, around here. Yes, but I'm strictly local. You're not. This is Doug Wallace, folks. This is a good friend of mine from a long time, uh, and uh, it's a pleasure to have I, you here. I, and you're very happy to be here. Thank you. Okay, so I was getting a lot of talk about people. Uh, the name of our company is Tinkham Veal Creative. Okay, mm -hmm. so people say Tinkham Veal. Like, what? Where? What is that? What? What kind <laughs> of a fish is that? Like, right? Uh, so I thought it'd be pretty interesting to find out a little bit more about Tinkham Veal, or at least. I know a whole lot about him, but you do a better job yeah. of explaining this than I do uh, here. So let's let's tell people a little bit who who this Tinkham is. I, I suppose is. it's too bad that mom and dad named him Tinkham, but there's a specific reason for that because his maternal uh, his, his maternal family, uh, his mother's family, were the Tinkhams, mm -hmm. and the, uh, both the Tinkhams and the Veals were pioneer uh, Kansas families coming here in the 1850s and the 1860s. And so he had a strong uh, uh, early Kansas background. And uh, he, uh, Tinkerville himself, uh, uh, again named after his uh, mother's side of the family, uh, was born uh, in 1884, grew up here in Topeka, grew up here in Topeka, attended Topeka High School, uh, graduated I think about 19, 1904, then attended Washburn and goes on to Washburn Law School. Uh, he briefly serves in the First World War. He's, uh, I think, in officer candidate school uh, uh, during the war kind of thing. It ends, comes back home, uh, continues, passes the bar and, and, and all of uh, uh, the legal uh, qualifications and so on and so on. He's appointed uh, assistant county uh, ter uh, attorney. <clears throat> then in the uh, early 1920s, about 1924, He's uh, elected uh, a county attorney, so uh, Topekans uh, in that in the Roaring Twenties kind of thing know him, of course, as their DA mm -hmm. kind of thing. Once after uh, two terms, or uh, he steps down and uh, begins. Uh, first of all, he begins his private legal career, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, his real uh, fame in local fame, at, at any rate, is of course related to development, commercial. And residential de development mm -hmm. in um, the 19 development of the community really. in, in the yeah. community. Yeah, <coughs> excuse me. Both um, here downtown, like where we are now at this moment, kind of thing, as well as in 1925, he purchases the 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 old Henry Cowles farm set, about 160 acres, more or less 160 acres, west of town, way at that time, pretty much way outside of. Uh, uh, not so much the city limits, but certainly any real residential development. And he sets it aside for a little period of time before he starts marketing. And he marks it as Topeka's new upscale neighborhood. And we know it by, uh, I suppose, he, not being vain, he wouldn't call it veal, uh, veal woods or veal land or anything like that. He names it Westboro. Cool. And, and so he establishes uh, the Westboro Development Corporation, uh, which uh, uh, lays out uh, uh, the, the tracks, uh, the, the streets, the, the winding streets, mm -hmm. according to the, uh, the, the lay of the land. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, on the northeast corner of that, establishes the, the beginnings of a little commercial section mm -hmm. at uh, Huntoon and Oakley, which will be known as the Westboro Mark. So all of this uh, is due to uh, his foresight. Interesting story about it is he beat out uh, another Topekan in order to purchase the property to develop residential neighborhood. And uh, it happened to be the man he beat was uh, 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 S.E. Cobb, mm -hmm. who was a local banker who was also Alf Landon's father-in-law. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so it's a small uh, world, isn't it? <clears throat> so instead of being land and tract and everything, it's the veal tract. Interesting stuff, and that kind of brings us a little bit closer to today, like why we named our company mm -hmm. Tinkham Veal after the guy because he he was a developer 
a community developer mm -hmm. who did things right. You know, the mm -hmm. slow, mm -hmm. steady kind of growth, mm -hmm. the, the next step, you know, uh, interesting. Uh, one of the, uh, the bank presidents who I had on the show here uh, wanted to come in and see the office that mm. Tinkham Veal had, oh, uh -huh. uh, just to see what kind of an office that someone like him <laughs> would have at that nice. time. And the, nice. comment, nice. the comment he made was, I can't believe the office is so small. Because mm -hmm. it, it was a different time where people were yes. just very rational in what they do, and uh, you know it was it well, was pretty interesting that Topeka, Topeka, is, Topeka of course, is what we would call uh, simply a, a provincial city. That's not mm -hmm. an insult. Mm -hmm. It's not an insult to calling it the provincial city, but it, it is. So you're not you're not going to come in with incredible uh, office suites like what say, Walter Chrysler had mm -hmm. in the Chrysler Building in uh, Midtown New York. Kind of thing. It's going to be uh, a much more simple operations. And besides, you don't need, you know, a five thousand square foot office. That's right. And uh, the interesting part, the other part that it is, <coughs> is that our whole business started here in this building. Mm -hmm. you know, I, mm -hmm. I was yep. twenty-two years old. Opened yes. a field of greens downstairs and just followed that trend of, of developing business, even to this mm -hmm. day, building TV stuff, one, building one, television one, studios, building it all uh, together. It, it, it's it's one so step cool. at a time and yeah. not trying to. Uh, this is a mistake, uh, obviously, that uh, some would be entrepreneurs. You know, they, they, they feel that they have to go it. in, have to go in immediately, get everything done quickly because we've created an instantaneous gratification society. Well, well that's going to trip you up. That's right. But by doing what essentially you've done with uh, the restaurants downstairs and with your uh, development here, kind of thing, uh, is uh, uh, the much more. Practical. Stable, yeah. It's stable and well, practical. It, it, Doug, I, I want to thank you. We're yes. running out of time here on this yeah. segment, but I want to thank you so much for coming on and joining us today. And uh, we're so glad we could pay well, to take and feel. Happy to do something happy.